Excellent. What's up guys, welcome to Paul's Hardware. I am not exactly sure how to introduce this video because on the one hand, it's a normal video. It's part of my regular monthly build series, but on the other hand, it's a different video than normal because this is actually my third video on the January build, which I don't normally go this far, but uh, I was really waiting until the software solution was uh, set up right since this is an RGB featured build and the software is now working. And in fact, all of my LEDs are now synchronized. So uh, this video is gonna be an actual test, a full on test of the RGB skills of this system. I'm also gonna do just a little bit of uh, additional benchmarking and I also want some feedback Back from you guys because uh, I'm going to be actually doing a little, little comparison in this video between my system that I built here and uh, Kyle's system that he built uh, which was originally a, a white RGB system and then he added the uh, G-Skill Trident Z memory to it and he did a video uh, a, week, a couple weeks ago asking for feedback and everything on uh, different RGB lighting configurations so I'm going to be actually using some of his lighting configurations in my builds here uh, and, and seeing if I can recreate them myself. Uh, I also have a couple straw polls that are linked down in the description below because um, I, I asked before I did this build what color system I should build in and you guys answered black and that's why it's a primarily black build with the RGB lights. But I want to ask that one more time. Uh, does Do you think a white build would look better now that you can also com cross compare this to Kyle's build? Uh, so answer answer in that straw poll if you want to. Uh, and then I also have a question about the R RGB LED case fans because I think that's another one of the big differences is Kyle had the NZXT Air case fans that are RGB as well in his, whereas I don't have those. And that wasn't necessarily a conscious choice of my part. Uh, actually, the, I don't think the air fans were around at the time when I was originally parting out this system. But let me know uh, via responses to those questions, and uh, hopefully, hopefully we will find an answer, a final answer, um, to, to last until the end of time. All right, uh, one other quick thing I wanted to mention is some of the benchmarks, because I usually do benchmarks on my monthly builds and show you guys some uh, comparisons. I did a lot of that in, in the part two video for this, so you feel free ch to check out that. Also, this video is kind of rushed because I'm actually, like back here behind me, I'm benchmarking Ryzen. Right? You can't even see it there. My Ryzen test bed is back there, and I'm trying to get this video out before that one goes out too, so that's why I'm a little bit rushed. But all that being said, there are going to be additional benchmarks of this system in my Ryzen comparison video, which should be up very soon. So check that out if you want to see some additional stuff. I did have to cut this down a little bit to make them comparable, so I had to pull a couple of the memory sticks out and actually underclocked the uh, the graphics card, the GTX 1080 from ASUS under there, so it would uh, line up more with that. Anyway, more on that in that actual video. And since I hadn't done it earlier, I also wanted to do a quick benchmark on the SSD that's installed here. Since it was a pretty significant portion of the cost of this system, it's 700 bucks right now for the RD400 uh, from OCZ, OCZ. OCZ Toshiba, um, but it's really fast. So uh, here's my benchmark results for that. I ran uh, Crystal Disk Mark and Addo just really quick. Bear in mind that the system is running off of that SSD right now. Windows is loaded onto it. So this is not how I would normally test an SSD. These are results despite it also running the OS at the same time. So 1.6 gigabytes per second reads, 1.2 gigabytes per second writes for sequential numbers. Uh, for 4K, those numbers are also pretty impressive. Faster 4K numbers here than you get from a typical SATA SSD. And like looking at the ra raids, like you'd have to take like three SATA SSDs and raid them in RAID 0 to get anything close to this. So that's pretty impressive from a single drive. Uh, IOPS down here were about 160,000 and 120,000 for reads and writes respectively. Also pretty impressive. Uh, and then I ran through Addo, which uh, does a bunch of different uh, test sizes. And with Addo, the larger the test size, um, the better the drive's gonna be able to, to perform. But here, again, with writes, we got up in the uh, 1.2 to 1.4 uh, gigabytes per second. Uh, writes and then for reads about 1.6 1.5 right in there. So very impressive still both ways Now beyond the SSD for overall performance again a little bit more on that in my previous video and a little bit more coming on that in my Ryzen comparison video But overall really happy with this system. The CPU was able to overclock to 4.9 gigahertz uh, That's that's pretty nice not quite five would have liked to have hit five, but you know 4.9 can't really complain about that. That's on a 7700K. Uh, the memory was running at uh, 3200. I did dial it back to about 3000, again, for the Ryzen comparison tests. Uh, but then the the, uh, the graphics card, uh, when overclock was hitting about 2050 to 2075 megahertz 
uh, on the GPU clock. All really impressive numbers, and of course those lead to good performance and benchmarks as well. But uh, this video is gonna be light on benchmarks and more about the lighting demonstration. There's actually one other thing I wanted to point out about this build. I am I, I didn't grow up or didn't get into building PCs for aesthetics. It took me a while to come around to being like, okay, maybe we can make them look pretty too. And the fact that I do videos uh, definitely is no small impact on that. So. Uh, a big part of my goal with this, and I don't really th feel like I've stated this as directly as I could have, was making a build that has RGB lighting, but also has the ability to turn it all off if you want to, or has the ability to do subtle changes to make it so it's not necessarily like a rainbow vomit going on all the time. You can make it a single color or, or, or that kind of thing. Anyway, all that being said, uh, let's actually test out some of this, this functionality that we have. Uh, so we're controlling all the lights on this build with two... Uh, pieces of software. The ASUS Aura software uh, is controlling the motherboard lights, uh, the graphics cards lights, as well as the case lights, because the case lights are all wired into the motherboard. Uh, and the case lights, of course, is what I was having some problems with uh, in part two of this video, uh, and that fortunately has been fixed. Fantex actually has a pretty cool looking little controller function board up there uh, on the top front of their case. Uh, that's where the power button goes. And actually that wires up to the RGB lighting control, which is also on the front panel of the case. Uh, and all you have to do once you've wired this up properly uh, to the motherboard is you actually need to hold in the button on that RGB uh, control panel in order to turn off the, the uh, board, the little PCB up there it trying to control the lights as well. That's why I was getting strange lighting configurations. Once you do that, everything should sync up properly as you see right now with the ASUS Aura software, uh, assuming you have control of that. All right, I also have the NZXT cam software and that is 100% only controlling uh, the NZXT uh, 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 Kraken, Kraken X62, which is right there. There's two LED lights on that, the NZXT logo across the middle and the ring light that goes around the outside. And I can turn those both off or on, so like right now, I just turn them back on and they are working, yay. And I can control those both independently. Uh, for now, I'm gonna turn those off um, just so you guys can only look at the Aura, Aura stuff, Aura controlled stuff. And then in the software, we can see that we have the motherboard, the graphics card and the RAM. And that's the other reason why I made a part three of this video was the RAM was not showing up in the software at all. And the memory, and that is of course the big improvement to this software is that you can get the memory lighting control as well. And uh, I think that's a slightly bigger deal because the memory, it's, I don't know, they, I feel like G-Skill did a good job with it. It stands out a lot uh, and it definitely adds to everything. So you can actually individually control the individual elements here, LED strips, the PCH, the back IO, the graphics card, the memory. Um, actually you can individually control each memory stick if you want to. That's what the static or breathing functions. Uh, or you can press this button here, which, uh, well, I'm sorry, this one button will do motherboard only. This button will uh, apply it to all, all devices. So you definitely wanna pay attention to that as you're going back and forth if you're just choosing a single color. Single colors are fun, uh, and, and you know, that's probably an easy way to synchronize with the NZXT stuff on there. But uh, I, you know, I don't mind. I don't mind the color cycle. Again, no user interaction here. That will just give you your cycling rainbow effects. Uh, I don't know why that there's a separate rainbow on here. Probably gives you a little bit more uh, direct control. I do like that you can sequence these individually. So you have main board, uh, the memory, and the VGA, and you can tell it which color to go to first or after that. Uh, this actually does a rainbow effect with all the different devices. So the devices will be different colors at different times. So that is the difference between color cycle and the rainbow effect. You can also re reverse that, uh, or you can do a gradient if you wanna do a gradient. What does that do? Oh, there we go. A gradient as opposed to what it was before. Uh, Comet is an interesting one. Let's hit that up and see how that goes. Basically, Comet is gonna flash through all of the different LEDs on the board, which is gonna do uh, the, the LEDs in the case, uh, and then it'll do, well, all the other ones that you, you can actually, you guys actually have a better view of it right now. It also cycles down through all the ones uh, in the memory LEDs as well, um, which looks kinda cool. Um, and you can actually change up the sequence again here as well to tell which you want to flash to first if you don't like the order that it's going in. And then you got flash and dash, which I actually think looks a little bit better. Flash and dash keeps the lights on uh, but dimmed and then it will flash each one as it cycles through. Flash and dash is also apparently doing a gradient right now, which uh, let's go back to plane. Let's do that to all devices. Okay, there. Now flash and dash is doing a single color flashing up 
each each individual one and cycling through it, um, which doesn't look too bad. They had like an RGB lightning storm uh, at, at CES, but that's not here anymore. Or maybe it was just flash and dash, and that's what I thought it was. Uh, you can, of course, do strobing, which I think has limited um, limited value, in my personal opinion. Just flashes on and on. Uh, you know, can change the speed if, if you want to. Uh, and then, of course, you have some reactive stuff, so you can tell it to um, base it on, this, on the system temperature. So if the CPU is below 40 degrees, you'll get green, as you see right now. Perhaps that one's a little bit more functional. And then music, and I'm going to come back to the music, because I think music is actually going to be the best bet for synchronizing this with the cam software, since you can tell them both to synchronize with music, and we'll see if they both do it at the same time. All that being said, uh, let's go and attempt to recreate some of the ones that Kyle did in his video, since I am uh, ostensibly trying to do a little comparison here. Uh, the first shot w one he did was Miami, so uh, let's, let's see what we can do with Miami. Um, Miami, we think, like, maybe turquoise and, and pink, I think, are probably the primary colors that you're going to want to go with. All right, there's, there's my uh, best shot of a Miami theme. What do you guys think? Pink and turquoise. That's Miami. Here is my attempt at vomits. I have uh, gradients of green, yellow, and sort of a brownish orange going on most of the case. And then I uh, got a similar rotating, sort of disorienting, vomity color going with the NZXT there as well. Looks, looks lovely. Here's my shot at Seizure, as requested by Gamers Nexus originally on Kyle's video. I have attempted to do as many colors as possible, flashing and changing as quickly as possible. The effect is, is quite mesmerizing. Here is my attempt at Portal, and uh, yeah, just stuck with blue and orange for this one. Here I will completely agree with you guys that um, the being able to set individual fan uh, LEDs to blue or orange would have been perfect for this one, but here I just want some orange trim around the outside, uh, blue for most of everything on the motherboard, and then of course to use the NZXT circular LED for the for an orange portal right there in the middle. And finally here, since I don't have quite the same amount of experience Kyle does with the illicit drug use apparently, here is a Christmas theme. I just made this one up, so I, I skipped over the acid and, and the rave. And uh, just went with Christmas, you know, nice and wholesome, red and green, looks looks okay. I don't know. It's nice to have a, a, a theme for your computer and be able to just engage that whenever the uh, appropriate holiday comes around. And besides all that, when was the last time you were able to do a candy cane theme with your memory? It's, this is a first for me. Lots of firsts today, actually. And there you have it guys, a demonstration of the lighting capabilities of my classy RGB build that I have right here. Um, and I'm, I think it's pretty cool. Um, actually the things I'm missing are going to be actually a couple of the effects that uh, G-Skill had in their software, which again is really similar to the Asus Aura software, but the G-Skill software only controls the G-Skill memory. Uh, they had a couple more effects in there, so I, uh, of course I'm imagining the software is going to continue to uh, be enhanced and developed as time goes by. And it does seem like they have the ability to throw some additional effects in there too, besides what I've shown off today. So I think I've done just about everything I wanted to do, except one last thing for you guys out there who are purists and aren't into RGB. Look, look, an off button. That's an off button there. And then these are off buttons here. And look, my classy RGB build is classy again, because there's no more RGB LEDs. Thanks for watching this video, guys. Hope you enjoyed it. Hit the thumbs, bu thumbs up button on your way out. If you did, uh, links to this build, all the parts and everything are down in the description, as well as my previous videos where I actually put this thing together. Stay tuned for Ryzen videos coming out really, really soon. I can't tell you exactly when, but trust me, it's soon. You guys will be excited. Uh, and yeah, thanks again for watching. We'll see you next time.